Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about polyembryon. In this topic, we are going to discuss what is polyembryony, history of polyembryony, types of polyembryony, the classification of polyembryony proposed by different scientists like Leeuwenhoek, Ernst and Schnarr, Gustafsson classification, Rieger, Michaelius, Green classification, Recall classification of polyembryony. Then we have to study what are the causes of polyembryony and what is the importance of polyembryony. So just Just we study first what is meant by polyembryon. So according to the word, the meaning of poly is many. And embryony means embryo. Means presence of many embryo. But whenever we are going to define the polyembryony, so polyembryony means it is the occurrence of more than one embryo in a single seed that we call it as a polyembryon. So before going to move towards what are the different types of polyembryony, we must have an idea about the typical structure of ovule. So see that this is a typical structure of ovule. So for clear understanding the concept of polyembryony, we must know about the embryo sac. We must know what are the cells which are present inside the embryo sac and outside the embryo sac. So just see here, this is the embryo sac which is generally 8 nucleated in the angiosperms. So here at the micropylar end of the ovule or embryo sac, there is a presence of egg apparatus in which there is a centrally situated egg cell and these two lateral are the synergy cells. Here is the centrally situated secondary nucleus and at the callosal end of the ovule there is a presence of antipodal cells. So see here that within the embryo sac it shows presence of the type of cells like A synergies secondary nucleus and antipodal cells while whenever we are going to observe the cells which are present outside the embryo sac so these are the nucellar cells this nucellus we also called as a nutritive tissue then the outer integument and inner integument so First, we must know what are the cells which are present in the embryo sac and what are the different types of cells which are present outside the embryo sac to understand different types of polyembryon. Now, we are moving towards the history of polyembryon. So, see that the scientists Leeuwenhoek, Ernst and Schnarr, they are going to first observe to see the polyembryon and the scientists classified the polyembryony firstly into two types depending upon whether the embryos arises from same embryo sac or in a different embryo sac in the ovule. So depending upon this one the Leeuwenhoek, Ernst and Schnarr they are going to categorize polyembryony into two categories that is true polyembryony and false polyembryony. While basically this polyembryony it is going to observe in gymnosperms basically in the members of conifers as well as this polyembryony is also observed in the angiosperms both in dicot as well as monocot species. So just see here what is a typical structure of embryo? So this is one of the dicot embryo. See this one. It shows presence of suspensor cells. It shows presence of two cotyledons. 
this is the plumule and radical this is the typical structure of embryo now we are going to study the classification of polyembryony according to levenhoek ernst and schnarr so see that this scientist they are going to categorize the polyembryony basically into two types that is true polyembryony and false polyembryony why the true polyembryony is once again categorized into two types that is cleavage polyembryony and advantive polyembryony so first we must have an idea about what is true and what is the false polyembryony that's why here we need the typical structure of ovule so just we see first the typical structure of ovule and we can understand what is mean by true and false polyembryony so see that whenever the embryo is formed from the cells which are present inside the embryo sac see here whenever there is a formation of embryo from the cells which are observed within the embryo sac that type of embryo development is categorized as an true polyembryony while whenever there is a development of embryo from the cells which are present outside the embryo sac so that embryo it is categorized as an false embryo or that type of polyembryony is categorized as an false polyembryony so it is very simple one then after this true polyembryony polyembryony is going to categorize under cleavage and advantage so whenever there is a cleavage in the egg cell whenever there is a cleavage in these zygote whenever there is a cleavage in the synergid cells maybe in the secondary nucleus or in the cleavage of the antipodal cells and if there is a formation of embryo sac so due to the cleavage of the cells which are present in the embryo sac so that type of polyembryony is called as an cleavage polyembryony so this is very simple one true and false true means whenever there is a formation of embryo from the cells which are present inside the embryo sac that polyembryony is the true, true polyembryony and whenever there is a formation of embryo from the cells which are present outside the embryo sac so that type of polyembryony is categorized as an false polyembryony now here we are going to study in detail about the cleavage polyembryony and then after the advantage polyembryony so see that the true polyembryony it shows the presence of cleavage polyembryony the cleavage polyembryony means whenever the embryos are arise from or due to the division of cells which are present in the embryo sac so that type of polyembryony we called it as an cleavage polyembryony so see here what are the different types there is a cleavage from zygote there is a cleavage from a there is a cleavage from synergids there is a cleavage from antipodal cells so one by one we are going to discuss that one so first we see the cleavage from zygote see the, this one this is the embryonal mass okay and under the true poly polyembryony this embryo sac cells they undergoes continuous division and they get proliferate themselves they are going to start to increase their size and they functions as an embryo so that type of embryony we call it as an true polyembryony so see here the first type of cleavage polyembryony that is the cleavage from zygote so we know that whenever the male gamete can fuses with the egg there is a formation of zygote but uh, see here 
whenever there is a formation of zygote this zygote also undergoes a continuous division and after the continuous division there is a formation of embryo but see here this is a single embryo but this single embryo it will further undergoes transverse division or it will undergoes the longitudinal division and there is a splitting of embryo into two embryos so this type of cleavage of the zygote this we call it as an cleavage from the zygote okay means there is a formation of two embryos okay from a single zygote so this is a very common type of polyembryonic in which there is increase in number of embryos due to the cleavage continuous cleavage of the zygote so this type of uh, embryony is seen in the species like erythrina nymphia various members of orchidaceae then see this one this is uh, the embryo which is formed due to the zygotic division and this is the embryo which is formed due to the synergied cell embryo then see that the second type of cleavage that is the cleavage from synergids and cleavage from antipodal cells so see here the cleavage from synergids and cleavage from antipodal cells means what whenever the synergid cells they behaves like a egg okay when a, there are some species in which the synergids itself act as an egg and undergoes continuous division to form the embryo without fertilization similar in similar case there are some plant species in which the antipodal cell they functions as an egg cell and undergoes continuous division to form the embryo so whenever there is a development of embryo from the synergid cells or from the antipodal cells due to the cleavage of the cells so that type it is categorized in a cleavage polyembryony so this type of cleavage polyembryony either from synergids or antipodal cells is observed in the plant species like nagus teliana cripes frag fragaria aristolochia allium ulmus then the next type which must be included in the cleavage polyembryony so already we have uh, studied the typical structure of embryo so typical structure of embryo it shows presence of 3 to 4 layer suspensor so here what happen the suspensor cells undergoes continuous division they will enlarge itself they will undergoes longitudinal division see here there is a longitudinal division inside the suspensor and they will form the embryo so this type of cleavage of the suspensor to form the embryo this type of polyembryony is also considered as cleavage polyembryony the next one see here the next type that is the cleavage from the endosperm or you can say here origin from the endosperm so here basically the cellular endosperm it undergoes continuous cell division and it will form the embryo basically the cleavage from endosperm it is observed in the species like balanophora ulnus so this is also one of the part of cleavage polyembryony so under the cleavage polyembryony once again see here that the cleavage polyembryony it shows or it includes the types like cleavage from zygote cleavage from egg cleavage from synergids cleavage from antipodals so if you observe all of them all these cells they are present inside the embryo sac okay and that type of polyembryony we call it as an cleavage polyembryony so this cleavage polyembryony also shows the cleavage from suspensor and cleavage from endosperm also 
Now next we are moving towards the second type of true polyembryony that is the advantive polyembryony. So what is mean by advantive polyembryony? So advantive polyembryony means whenever there is a development of embryo from the cells outside the embryo sac means there is a development of embryo either from new cellular cell or from the integumental cell that type of polyembryony is categorized as an advantive polyembryony now we are going to complete the two types of true polyembryony that is cleavage and advantive one now next we are going to move towards the false polyembryony so already we have discussed the typical structure of ovule here so see that what is false polyembryony so false polyembryony means whenever there is a formation of embryo either from the new cellular cells either from the division and redivision of new cellular cell or from the integumental cell okay so that type of polyembryony is called as an false polyembryony similar to the new cells and integumental cells sometimes the functional megaspore mother cell it undergoes continuous division and it will form the embryo so this is also a type of false polyembryony there are some examples of the members which shows the presence of false polyembryony that is citrus poya cajurina then see that here we have completed the classification of polyembryony according to the levenhoek ernst and schnarr now next we are going to study the classification of polyembryony depending upon the rigor michaelius and green so these are the scientists who are going to categorize polyembryony into three types that is simple polyembryony cleavage polyembryony and sporophytic embryony so first we are going to start from the simple polyembryony so see that what is a simple poly polyembryony so you must know that the plant shows uh, sometimes shows the presence of numerous number of ovules but there are only two male gametes one male gamete fuses with egg to form the zygote and second fuses with secondary nucleus to form the triploid endosperm nucleus but what is simple polyembryony so see here that simple polyembryony means what the ovule shows presence of numerous number of ovules okay typically the female gametophyte it shows the presence of numerous number of ovule and each ovule is fertilized by a separate sperm okay each ovule is fertilized by a separate sperm and each will give rise to embryo so this type of formation of embryo we called as an simple polyembryony okay in which each ovule it is fertilized by a separate sperm and it will form the embryo this type of polyembryony is categorized as an simple polyembryony then see here the second type of polyembryony that is cleavage polyembryony so all of we know that whenever the male gamete it fuses with the egg cell it will form the zygote but what is the cleavage polyembryony here according to the scientist rigor michaelius and green here see here this is the zygote here this zygote undergoes continuous transverse division okay and it will forms the embryo then after due to the lateral divisions it will forms the another embryo means there is a cleavage of zygote and during each cleavage it will forms a new embryo so that type of embryo formation due to the cleavage in zygote this type of polyembryony is categorized as an cleavage polyembryony and see here 
the embryos which are formed due to the cleavage of zygote so all that embryos are monozygotic one okay means they are originated originating from a single zygote okay then the third type according to the rigor michaelius and green scientist that is the sporophytic polyembryon so see here what is mean by sporophytic polyembryony so here whenever there is a formation of embryo either from the new cellular cells or from the integumental cells basically these cells are sporophytic one and here the sporophytic cells are participating in the development of embryo that's why this type of polyembryony is called as sporophytic polyembryony so here we are going to complete the three types according to the rigor michaelius and green scientist now next we are moving towards the classification of polyembryony which is proposed by scientist yakol okay so according to this scientist the polyembryony is going to divide into two types that is gametophytic and sporophytic so here we are going to discuss what is mean by gametophytic and what is sporophytic so see here that this is very simple classification that is gametophytic means see here within the embryo sac there is a presence of gametes okay so whenever there is a formation of embryo from the cells which are present inside the embryo sac okay basically after the process of fertilization or it may be developed parthenogenetically okay if there is a formation of embryo from the cells which are present in the embryo sac at that time according to the scientist yavol this type of polyembryony is categorized as an gametophytic polyembryony and the second type which is proposed by the scientist yavol that is sporophytic polyembryony so sporophytic polyembryony means see here whenever the embryo it is developed from the new cellular cell or from the integumental cell so that type of polyembryony is called as a sporophytic polyembryony so here we are going to complete the different classifications proposed by different scientists okay then here we are going to study what are the actual causes of polyembryony so see here that basically the many scientists they are going to propose generally two causes or there are two main causes of polyembryony out of that the first cause that is the nucrohormone theory this nucrohormone theory it was proposed by the scientist haberland in the year 1921 22 according to this theory we know that the new cellular cells that we call it as an uh, nutritive cells okay so that new cellular cells they acts as an stimulus basically those new cellular cells which are degenerating one they acts as an source of stimulus for the adjacent cell to become they divide and they can form the embryos okay that's why this theory is called as an nucrohormone theory so according to this one the new cellular cells they are going to transfer the special type of hormone that is the nucrohormone to the other adjacent species and start them to divide and form the embryo okay so this is the first cause which is basically observed in the species of onion thora okay so this is the first reason that's why the polyembryony can occur and the second cause of polyembryony that is the hybridization theory so this hybridization theory it was proposed by the scientist capart in the year 1933 so see that basically we know the process of hybridization in the process of hybridization we are going to mix uh, the two 
genetic constitution and we can form a third generation which is new one or it is the combination of all that two varieties so according to this theory the multiple embryos are formed due to the process of hybridization why because in the process of hybridization we are going to recombine the genes and recombination of the genes it is one of the cause of formation of multiple embryos there are some plants in which there are some recessive genes which are responsible to form the multiple embryos for example citrus okay so here the second cause of polyembryony is the process of hybridization the next we are going to study what is the importance of polyembryony so see that polyembryony plays very important role in the process of plant breeding it plays very important role in the process of hybridization by using the polyembryony we are able to make the clones if we want to develop the different horticulture crops which are looking similar one so polyembryony it is one of the important <coughs> reason for that one if we want to propagate the plants so polyembryony it is used for the propagation of plant basically those plants which are form after the process of polyembryony they are basically disease free one then by the process of polyembryony we are able to produce the artificial embryos either from egg cells synergid cells or antipodal cells this polyembryony it is also useful for the production of haploids as well as diploids so in this way we are going to complete the concept of polyembryony its classification its causes and importance so if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel thank you